TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Hello and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi emphasizes that if Hamas resumes its indiscriminate rocket fire, the Israeli military will resume its offensive operation. The United Nations Human Rights Council adopts a resolution to investigate Israel over the Gaza Strip and Jerusalem. It stops short from even mentioning the indiscriminate rocket fire by Hamas toward Israeli civilian communities. The United Nations Special Envoy for the Middle East Peace Process at a Security Council meeting of the United Nations blames Hamas for instigating the latest round of hostilities. The Islamist Hamas organization was evidently surprised by Israel's determination, despite Jerusalem's political deadlock, to launch an offensive military operation in the Gaza Strip in response to the indiscriminate rocket fire directed at the Israeli capital on May 10th. Speaking at the IDF's operations division, to summarize Operation Guardian of the Walls, Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi asserted that the element of surprise should be added to the list of achievements which the Israeli military attained during the latest round of hostilities in Gaza. Hamas פעם אחת מעצם העובדה שאנחנו נכונים ויוצאים למבצע על מה שהוא עשה. פעם שנייה על העוצמה שהוא פגש, פעם שלישית על הדיוק והאיכות ושלילת היכולות שהוא פגש. ולמרות כל העוצמה הזאת שאני מתאר, פעלנו ברוח צהל, ברוח העם היהודי, במקום הכי צפוך והכי מסובך בעולם. ולמרות כל זאת הבאנו את ה... General Kochavi went on to stress the crucial importance to remain humble and to ensure that the IDF learns from the latest round of fighting for the seemingly inevitable next round of hostilities. בתוך כל המבצע הזה הייתה הפגנה מאוד משמעותית של יכולות שנבנו בצה"ל לאורך שנים ובאופן מיוחד במסגרת התוכנית הרב שנתית תנופה שבקצה הביאו הרבה יותר מודיעין, הרבה יותר מודיעין לקצה, הרבה יותר מטרות, הרבה יותר כושר תקיפה מדויק, הרבה יותר כושר סגירת מעגלים, והרבה יותר קישוריות וחיבור בין כולם לכולם. לצד העניין הזה, גם שיתוף פעולה נהדר. תיאום גבוה מאוד בין הגופים, בין הזרועות, בין המטה הכללי לבין הפיקוד, ועם כל כלל היחידות. לצד כל ההישגים האלה, אנחנו חייבים להישאר ביקורתיים כלפי עצמנו, אנחנו חייבים להישאר צנועים, ואנחנו חייבים לקיים תהליך למידה ושיפור של כל מה שצריך שיפור, שינוי והתאמה. The top Israeli officer whose leadership in the Gaza operation led Defense Minister Benny Gantz and Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu to extend his term as the IDF chief of general staff by a fourth year, further highlighted the need to capitalize on the operational achievements against the Islamist organizations in Gaza for the purpose of making parallel gains in the political sphere. With that being said, General Kochavi insisted that unless quiet is preserved, the IDF will be forced to react immediately. If Hamas understands that we will not get a rocket from any kind of thing, then, if he doesn't understand, אנחנו צריכים להיערך להמשך לחימה. אנחנו מוכנים לזה. לאורך כל המבצע הזה פעלנו אחרת, ואנחנו צריכים שההמשך יהיה אחרת. Meanwhile in the Palestinian enclave, the Islamist Hamas organization held a commemoration ceremony for its killed operatives with tens of thousands of Gazans in attendance. During the ceremony, which praised the Islamist terrorists as heroes and granted children a photo opportunity next to the weapon systems used to fire indiscriminately and to Israel, Hamas leaders pledged that the annihilation of the Jewish state is just a matter of time. Turning to the Swiss city of Geneva, where the United Nations Human Rights Council adopted a resolution which was promoted by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, 
calling for the creation of a permanent commission of inquiry, then after the world body's high commissioner for human rights insisted that Israel may have committed war crimes during the recent round of hostilities in Gaza. It is important to note that while the resolution sought to label Israel as the culprit of hostilities, it evidently failed to condemn the indiscriminate rocket fire by the Islamist organizations in the Palestinian enclave, deliberately directed at Israeli civilian communities, a fact which drew outrage from a number of European nations that voted against the bias resolution. We unequivocally condemn the firing of rockets by Hamas and other terrorist groups from Gaza into Israel and regret that the resolution presented today does not include any statement to this effect. Alongside Austria, which voted against resolution, the United Kingdom, Uruguay, Malawi, the Marshall Islands, Germany, Bulgaria, Cameroon and the Czech Republic refused to lend a hand to the one-sided resolution. And while India, the Netherlands, France, Denmark, Italy, Japan, Brazil, the Republic of Korea, Fiji, Poland and the Bahamas, along with several other nations, abstained, the Philippines joined with China, Russia, Cuba, Libya, Venezuela, Pakistan and Indonesia, alongside 16 other nations in support of the anti-Israeli resolution. Consequently, Israel, which is not a party to the Human Rights Council, emphasized that it will not cooperate with such a biased investigation. The resolution does not mention Hamas, does not mention the more than 4,400 rockets that were launched at Israeli civilians indiscriminately. Judging from past experience, the Commission of Inquiry will not look into Hamas war crimes. Therefore, Israel will not cooperate with such an investigation. We are committed to the security of our citizens and will continue to protect our population while upholding our obligations under international law. In contrast to Israel's voiced outrage over the bias resolution, the Islamist Hamas organization naturally warmly welcomed the Human Rights Council's decision. في جرائم الحرب التي ارتكبتها قوات الاحتلال ضد قطاع غزة والقدس ما حدث في قطاع غزة هو جريمة حرب مكتمة الأركان تابعها العالم عبر شاشات التلفزة الآن مطلوب خطوة أبعد من ذلك بمعاقبة فعليا للاحتلال واتخاذ خطوات رادعة حتى لا يكرر هذه الجرائم بحق شعبنا الفلسطيني المقاومة من جانبها قامت بالدفاع عن شعبها وفق القوانين والقرارات الدولية وهي مقاومة مشروعة بكل القوانين والقرارات الإنسانية it is interesting to know that while the United Nations Human Rights Council kept to its anti-Israel track record, the United Nations' most powerful body, the Security Council, was updated on the latest developments in the Middle East, during which its envoy to the region, in what may be regarded as unprecedented, blamed the Islamist Hamas organization for the recent round of hostilities. Although Israeli authorities took steps to reduce tension, including rerouting the march, postponing a Supreme Court hearing on the CHRI evictions and barring Jewish visits to the holy sites, the violence and heavy security presence continued. That very same day, Hamas fired seven rockets towards Jerusalem, causing some property damage and setting of the escalation of hostilities. These recent events have made clear once again the cost of perpetual conflict and lost hope. The challenges in Gaza, like this conflict as a whole, require political solutions. As we look ahead, our approach cannot be business as usual, and we cannot afford to repeat the mistakes of the past. The Israeli deputy ambassador to the United Nations, for her part, emphasized that the people of Gaza are not Israel's enemy. The people of Gaza are victims of Hamas and are not our enemy. It is clear that the full responsibility for the escalation lies with Hamas, an internationally designated terrorist organization with an ideology similar to ISIS. Failing to condemn Hamas or attempting to create any sort of moral equivalency between a murderous terrorist organization and a democratic country acting in accordance with international law encourages terrorism, encourages anti-Semitism, hurts the Palestinian living in Gaza, and destroys any chance for dialogue. 
Blaming Jews for the death caused by a terrorist group feeds into the oldest of anti-Semitic tropes. The result of these dangerous statements have already begun to appear. Coming out of the pro-Palestinian rallies and demonstration, we could see and hear clearly the anti-Semitic attacks on the Jews and Jewish institutions, alongside the demonization of Israel and the call for its annihilation. Never has there been a clearer example of the fact that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. The Palestinian Authority's representative, whose leadership in Ramallah regard Hamas as their arch rival, paradoxically did not shy away from the opportunity to lay the full blame for hostilities in Gaza on Israel, claiming that the Jewish state's sovereignty over Jerusalem and its oppressive policies and colonial occupation, as he put it, were the cause for the deteriorating situation, despite the fact that Israel has not controlled the Gaza Strip, which also has a border with Egypt, since 2005. <laughs> هو نتيجة حتمية لسياساتها القمعية واحتلالها الاستعماري. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the Philippines in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. In addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.